Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Empty Space. It plays two to four players with a solo variant, and in Empty Space, you're going to be trying to traverse the galaxy to an exoplanet of types, and you're going to be gathering a probe and then getting a rocket, trying to land them both on those exoplanets before any other player does so. The game plays uh, 45 minutes or so, takes about, yeah, it takes about 45 minutes, and it's for ages, I'd say about eight and up it's fairly simple as far as how you go it has a lot to do with memory and is going to have two different styles of play depending on what portion of the game you're in anyway let's go ahead and take a look down below at empty space and then i'll tell you how to play so here you have the game Empty Space and everything that is included. And as you can see, it's a grid-based game. And if you're going to do it right, you're going to shuffle this main deck here and you're going to deal at a four by seven grid here, along with shuffling in these four exoplanets at the end. And they're gonna have the four different colors based on the four probes and rockets you have over here. Each player is going to get four cards from this deck here and they're gonna be hidden from view from any other players so that only you can see them. And then you're going to deal out two cards face up next to this deck here. Additionally, each player is going to choose to flip over two cards from this grid here face up to let people see what is out there in space and there's mainly a lot of planets could be black holes who knows what you're gonna get after you've done that give everybody a player aid it'll show you what you can do on your turn determining on the two different actions you can take and then the actions that you can choose to take based on the cards in your hand nobody's going to start with a specific player color these will be earned throughout the game as you draw cards and play actions uh, and to begin the game now you're ready to go so uh, we're gonna go and start with this player here and he's got two yellow one green and a blue and he can choose to do one of two things he can choose to research or he can choose to explore if he does a research he can choose to draw two cards from either here or here and replacing these when you get them then you could play cards from your hand and then you discard cards down to four so you're always going to have a hand size of four at the end of your turn regardless of how many you started with the other action is explore in which we can play cards from your hand you can move probes and or rockets and these are the probes and these are the rockets here once you've gathered a specific probe that is your color for the rest of the game and your objective is to get that probe to its specific colored exoplanet along with its rocket to the planet afterwards you always have to land your probe first before you can gather a rocket and then move it so this player is probably going to go for yellow so he's going to go ahead and start with research by drawing a card here replacing it now he gets to draw one more and he'll choose to draw one from the deck Nice. Then he can choose to play cards. So he happens to have four of the yellow cards here, which is very useful for him. Also, he's going to then spend these four yellow, and that is going to get him a yellow probe. And he can place it just outside of this board here because he can't move it in just yet. After that, he would discard cards down to his hand size, but he already has only two, so his total is four, so he's okay now. And then it's the next player's turn. Before we go to the next player's turn, let's look at this black hole here. Black holes can replace other cards in this area here, and black holes block movement. And if you happen to walk across a hidden black hole, you're going to have to go back to start. Along with choosing to press your luck in this game, you might have to go back to start as well. This player's got two reds, so perhaps he's going to also take the research action and draw two cards. There's a red there for him, and there's another red. Wow, that was perfect. Replacing one here, using his or her action cards, one, two, three, and four four to then go ahead and purchase the red probe so that means that green and blue won't be needed for this specific game because these are the colors for the players uh, based on the cards they played then once again the next player's turn the next player is going to go ahead and choose to take the research action again drawing cards uh, so we'll go with this one here and then we'll go with another one here so he's got a nice ample hand of cards and now we can go ahead and play cards. So let's go ahead and look at the actions that you can take other than simply buying uh, the the different probes and or rockets because now the, that has been bought, the next thing he'll buy is a rocket, but he can't do that until his probe gets to the exoplanet of that specific color. So let's look at, there's peak slash reveal the universe. So you can, if you have two different colored cards, so let's say I get discarded these two here, I can then look at two cards in this area here that are face down. I could also choose to flip them up and reveal them for everybody and leave them there permanently. But you may or may not want to do that based on your memory. So I could choose to, like I'll show you, I'll just show you an example. These 
these two would get discarded for the specific action, in which case this yellow player would look at this card here, and then go ahead and look at this card here. Most of the cards will have a color on them, and there are a couple exceptions like the Black Hole and this Apollo card, which is going to have four all the different colors. Basically, what that means is that any player can land on this space for free, because you can always land on your own colored space for free in this game. The other option you can go ahead and do is changing the universe, and you can spend three of the same color card and discard them, and then replace one of the universe's cards with one of the cards that you have discarded. So if I had three blue here, if these were all three were blue, I could discard these three here, in which case I get to take this card away and I could replace it with this one here. And that is how you would change the universe in the game. Uh, and that is the basic idea for how researching works. Now, if I were to choose to explore, so we'll go ahead and just do his turn next. He'll go ahead and just draw this card here and draw this one here and replace it. Then it would go back to the yellow player's turn. And I will show you what the explorer does. So now the explorer can choose to play action cards and then move probe or rocket. He's not going to play any action cards. He's just going to simply move. And uh, yellow is going to say, okay, I'm going to move here, in which case he'd move on the space. He'd flip it over and it's a freebie space because he saw it last turn. So it doesn't cost him anything because there's a yellow space there. You can choose to move as many times as you want, but if you ever get to a space in which you don't have a card to pay for it, you're going to have to go back to start. So you can choose to also stop whenever you'd like. So he'll go to the next space here, flip it over. He does have a green card, so he can then spend this green card to move to that specific space, and he's getting closer to these exoplanets here. He can move again if he would like, and flip this over. Hopefully it's a red or a blue. Oh, good. That's his color, so he's good. He'll go to the next one as well. He's just going to keep moving along. There's a red one here, and then discarding this one. Now, in my opinion, he probably should stop, but we'll just go ahead and show you what happens if he draws another one. Uh, that's a red, in which case he'll have to go back because he does not have a red card. So be, be aware of that. And when these get flipped over, they stay flipped over. So it's most likely he would not have done that. In which case it'd be the next player's turn. And then he or she could simply choose to start moving. And because these are open spaces, he can now, he or she can now move there for free because they know that's a red. He can move there with the green card. This is free. This is free. This is free. So he actually can move even farther. So when you choose to reveal things and push your luck, it can actually benefit other players based on your movement. Eventually somebody's going to reach one of these four spaces here. And when that happens, these exoplanets are going to get revealed as well as their colors, which will show you where you need to get to. When the yellow one gets revealed for the specific player, he or she needs to get their probe there. And when that happens, they can now purchase this rocket, place it there. And then the last thing they need to do is get this rocket over to that specific exoplanet. The first player to do this is going to win the game Empty Space, and everybody else will be trapped in the cosmos for all eternity. Okay, that sounded a bit dark, but yeah. Yellow would win. So some caveats for empty space before we begin. The first one is when you buy a probe, you can move it to that space that will reveal the exoplanets. And when that happens, that is when you can choose to buy the rocket. You just can't move the rocket until your probe lands on that specific exoplanet of its color. The next thing is when you peek at the universe or reveal the universe, it's just one card, not two. I think I said two. And uh, there, there was some other little thing, but otherwise that's basically how you play the game empty space. So what do I think about this game? Well, first of all, it is a memory game or it is, and it's also a little bit of a press your luck game. Now you could choose to reveal the universe, but that's going to basically give players your action, including yourself. If you already know that they don't actually have the cards that are needed for that specific space, then maybe it's better for you, especially if you don't have the memory. So it kind of gives you like a scale to weigh your options based on maybe how well your memory is compared to how well your hand management is. You may be farther ahead in this game, but being farther ahead just means that you've opened up the spaces behind you for other opponents to catch up. And that is the built-in catch-up mechanic in this game. If you are at the end, it's very likely that people are trailing close behind you and managing their hand based on the trail that you pave. Whereas you yourself are trying to chart empty space and sometimes that's very beneficial but it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to win when you get your probe across and onto your exoplanet uh, that is the basic uncharted territory you're discovering space you're learning what's the best route for you specifically and then after you've done that you're going to use your rocket to try and pay about the cards in your hand based on the best best path in the game. So if you are on one side of the board and you see this path that looks good, but you don't have those specific cards, maybe you want to push your luck on the other side, or maybe you've been smart and built your hand based on the knowledge of previous probes going across the universe, allowing yourself to be a step ahead of most people and pushing across. This game has a bit of luck as far as the different pushing your luck mechanics go, but you don't actually have to do so, uh, as well as when you draw from the deck 
deck here, you never know what cards you're going to get. Some of them might be the wild card, others are going to be the four different colors. And then there's the black holes. Black holes are cool, but I think there's too many of them in this game. There's quite a lot that can be done to you when a black hole is placed on the board. It's basically like uh, changing space or the universe, but in a negative way, and it can kind of halt your, your, your opponents for a single turn, which is not really a loser turn, but it kind of feels like it a little bit. I really like the portion of the game in which you're having the options to push your luck and get to the end of the universe, but I was not as big of a in favor of getting across your rocket afterwards. Now, don't get me wrong, I know that the theme is heavily involved with first charting out empty space and then pushing your rocket through, uh, and then it plays two different ways. I just prefer the first way of which you're playing the game a little bit more, giving me a little bit more of a, ooh, do I want to do this? Do I want to do that? Whereas at the end, I'm more like, okay, I just need to do hand management, and that becomes a little bit more like ticket to as to which cards I need to hold and how I need to get across space uh, over and, and pushing your luck you can but it's almost not worth it because there's already charted space out there and you'd rather just get the cards. Now, some people might just have the cards already. But nevertheless, when we played the game multiple times, it always came down to maybe the last turn to two turns away. It was very close. People were pushing through because of that built-in catch-up mechanic, which was really cool. I like the option of being able to choose memory or allowing it to be revealed for players that are not as good with memory, like maybe myself. But at the same time, pushing your luck is the kind of style of game I like, so I would keep things face down and just hope I could do my best. Players who like the artwork in this game are going to dig it as well because the theme is entrenched with that artwork. The artwork is beautiful, and I would not be surprised if this is actual artwork from space. I always love games that include artwork like this because it just gives me that feel of the theme in the game. So the theme comes out really well. Overall, it's a solid little game. Personally, not something that I would want to play as much as maybe my cameraman Grant and my wife. They really heavily enjoyed this game. Different strokes for different folks. But regardless, if you're interested in taking a look at empty space, you can go ahead and check out down below in the comment section. And uh, of course, let me know what you think. Overall, I enjoyed my time with this. And if asked, I'm definitely going to play again.